Good morning. The story goes of a young teenager who was driving his parents' automatic car. He began to think about shifting gears and even though the car had an automatic transmission, he imagined shifting from first to second and then up to third. Danger. With the radio turned quite loud, he reached down and put his hand on the gear shift and gave a quick pull and instead of going to the next gear, his hand slipped and he accidentally put the car in reverse. Before he could step on the brake, he knew that there was a major problem. All the lights across the dashboard were flashing and there was a strange smell and a very strange noise. The key was still in the ignition. It's no laughing matter. Some of us are shaking our heads. Others are laughing in disbelief at a story like this. But the scenario is all too real. Travelling through life, there are many who give God a second thought. Sometimes our lives are so focused on achieving things that we believe will give us a sense of self-importance, status and recognition. We feel as though we're moving forward until we decide to move up a gear and find ourselves in reverse. Sometimes we cannot go through a day without fighting thoughts of failure. Before I go any further, let me categorically state that God knows your greatest need. He knows your disappointments. He knows the frustration that could be headed our way if we fail to focus our hearts on Him. Isaiah 58 verse 11 is so powerful. It says the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places and give strength to your bones and you will be like a watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. See, God knows our potential and if we will allow him, he will show us how to live each day in the light of his success and victory over defeat. We don't have to look far to find people who are struggling with pain or hoping to gain some sense of hope for the future. We face problems professionally and we face problems personally and the ones at home just seem to be the worst. My friend, if you feel that you've shifted into reverse or gone into another gear, you can turn your life around. You can go in a different direction. You can go in another direction and begin to live again, not just exist. But you must be willing to open your heart to the leading of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You must be willing to, to open your heart to the plans of God. This means being willing to trust God and allow Him to lead you day, to lead you day by day. Good morning, a woman said as she walked up to a man sitting on the ground. The man looked up slowly. This woman was clearly accustomed to the finer things of life. Her coat was new and she looked like she'd never missed a meal in her entire life. His th first thought was that she wanted to make fun of him like so many others had done before. Leave me alone, he growled. To his amazement, the woman continued to stand there. She was smiling. Her even white teeth displayed in dazzling rows. Are you hungry? she asked. No, he answered sarcastically. I've just come from dining with the president. Now go away. The woman's smile became even broader. Suddenly, the man felt a gentle hand under his arm. What are you doing, lady? The man asked angrily. I said to leave me alone. Just then a policeman came up. Is there a problem, madam? He asked. No problem here, officer. The woman answered. I'm just trying to help this man get to his feet. Will you help me? 
The officer scratched his head. That's old Jack. He's been a fixture around here for a couple of years. What do you want with him? See that cafeteria over there? She asked. I'm going to get him something to eat and get him out of the cold for a while. Are you crazy, lady? The homeless man resisted. I don't want to go in there. And then he felt strong hands grab his other arm and lift him up. Let me go, officer. I didn't do anything. This is a good deal for you, Jack, the officer answered. Don't blow it. Finally, with some difficulty, the woman and the police officer got Jack into the cafeteria and sat him at a table in a remote corner. It was the middle of the morning, so most of the breakfast crowd had already left and the lunch brunch had not yet arrived. The manager strode across the cafeteria and stood by this table. What's going on here, officer? He asked. What is all this? Is man in trouble? This lady brought this man in here to be fed, the policeman answered. Not in here, the manager replied. Having a person like this in here is bad for business. Old Jack smiled his toothless grin. See, lady, I told you so. Now, if you let me go... I didn't want to come here in the first place. The woman turned to the cafeteria manager and smiled. Sir, are you familiar with Edie and Associates, the banking firm down the street? Of course I am, the manager answered impatiently. They hold their weekly meetings here in one of my banquet rooms. And you make a godly amount of money providing food at these weekly meetings? What business is that of yours? I, sir, am Penelope Edy, the president and CEO of the company. Oh. The woman smiled again. I thought that might make a difference. She glanced at the cop who was busy snuffling a giggle. Would you like to join us in coffee and a meal, officer? No, no thanks, ma'am. I'm on duty. Then perhaps a cup of coffee on the go? Yes, ma'am, that would be very nice. The cafeteria manager turned on his heels. I'll get your coffee for you right away, officer. The officer watched him walk away. You certainly put him in your place, he said. That was not my intent. Believe it or not, I have a reason for all of this. She sat down across the table from her amazed dinner guest and stared at him intently. Jack? Do you remember me? Old Jack searched her face with his old roomy eyes. Uh, I think so. I mean, you do look familiar. I'm a little older, perhaps, she says. Uh, even I might have filled out a bit more than in my younger days when you worked here. And I came through that very door, cold and very hungry. Madam, the police officer said questioningly, he couldn't believe that such a magnificently turned out woman could ever have been hungry. I was just out of college, the woman began. I'd come to the city looking for a job, but I couldn't find anything. Finally, I was down to my last few cents and had been kicked out of my apartment. I walked the streets for days. It was February, and I was cold and nearly starving. I saw this place and walked in on the off chance that I could get something to eat. Jack lit up with a smile. Now I remember, he said, I was behind the serving counter. You came up and asked me if you could work for something to eat, and I said that was against company policy. I know, the woman continued. Then you made me the biggest roast beef sandwich I've ever seen. Gave me a cup of coffee and told me to go to the corner table and enjoy it. I was afraid that you would get into trouble. Then when I looked over, I saw you put the price of my food in the cash register. I knew then that everything would be all right. So you started your own business, old Jack said. I got a job that very afternoon and I worked my way up. Eventually I started my own business that with the help of God prospered. 
she opened her purse and pulled out a business card. When you're finished here, I want you to pay a visit to Mr. Lyons. He's the personnel director of my company. I'll go and talk to him now, and I'm certain he'll find something for you to do around the office, she smiled. I think he might even find the funds to give you a little advance so you can buy some clothes and get a place to live until you get on your feet. If ever you need anything, my door is always open to you. There were tears in the old man's eyes. How can I ever thank you, he said. Don't thank me, the woman answered. To God goes the glory. Thank Jesus. He led me to you. Outside the cafeteria, the officer and the woman paused at the entrance before going their separate ways. Thank you for all your help, officer, she said. On the contrary, Miss Edie, he answered. Thank you. I saw a miracle today, something that I will never forget. Oh, and, and, and thank you for the coffee. See, sometimes we... We shift so quickly into overdrive that we overlook God. We never consider the Lord in our decisions. We speed through life, cramming in as much as possible so that we don't have to think about things or stop and ponder or ask God to look over our plans first. We don't stop until something happens, something terrible. And then we are forced to a halt. We can't seem to make sense of what is happening. And then alone with our fears, we wonder how we're ever going to be able to live fully again. There is a way. It's God's way. Not the way of the world. The way that is sometimes very different to what we think or imagine. Sometimes we fall behind because we are trapped in situations that we cannot change. God understands our plight. He knows when the burdens we carry become too heavy and then he promises to bear them and help us find another way. I read this in Psalm 68 verse 19 where it says, Praise the Lord who carries our burdens day by day. He is the God who saves us. Instead of looking through the windscreen of hope and possibility and moving forward, we find ourselves staring through the rear, view, through the rear window. And sometimes we go the wrong way and bump over all the things that are behind us. And we are moving backward. We believe the lie. Words spoken that are simply not true or statements that have lowered our self-esteem, or things that have been said that have changed our direction and we're making the wrong turn. None of this is true. We get stuck in feelings of defeat and disillusionment. You're not alone, my friend. Many of us feel this way, and we fail to reach the potential that God has put in our lives. All of us have struggled with feelings of self-doubt and discouragement. Even godly men and women in God's word have struggled with fear and temptation. But God has not designed us for failure. There is a promise of hope. Abraham, the one person who is called the friend of God, understands our confusing situations. He grew up in a pagan culture and all that goes with it. But when God called him, he moved forward. God brought him into a relationship with himself. And when God called, Abraham obeyed. He left home and kindred and went to a land that God called him to go. And you know what? He was 75 years old. It wasn't all plain sailing. He took many a wrong turn made bad decisions and fell into disobedience. But God did not abandon him or remove the call or remove his love. Because you see, God is ever faithful. His care and love for Abraham and for us will not shift 
or change. When we get off track and go the wrong way or take a wrong turn or we shift into a wrong gear, God is patient with us. He disciplines us to get back on track to the point of restoration in our relationship with Him. But we need to submit to Him and to His love for us. There's some things we need to change. We need to admit our need for change. God saw in Abraham's heart, saw that in Abraham's heart and drew him close. We can, we can do what God calls us to do or we can stop and be captured by sin, complacency and feelings of hopelessness. Abraham did not wait for life to become difficult before he did what the Lord created him to do. He responded to God's call with obedience. Many people fail to realize God has designed for them a specific purpose. He does not call everyone into ordained ministry, but he certainly calls each of us to worship him and to live our lives for him, reaching out to others and doing the ministry that he calls us to do. Like buying a cup of coffee. God has plans and goals for each of us. He longs for us to reach them so that we can live our lives for Him. And when this happens, we gain a new sense of security and freedom and hope, unlike anything we've ever known. We shift gears, we push in the clutch, and we get out of reverse. And we begin to live our lives of faith. When we believe, cling to, and rely on God for all we need, we move from running in reverse to moving forward. We need to chase the things that have eternal value. Some years ago a friend gave me a key ring which read, Have a good eternity. And I pray that for you today. There's something about meeting God and hearing His voice that changed Abraham's life view. One day he was going in one direction, but after God spoke to him, he changed course as quickly as that. There's no question. He just obeyed God by faith. Many times we want all the answers before we're willing to take that step of faith and trust Him. But friends, the danger actually comes when we fail to keep our hearts open and soft and sensitive to the voice of God. This happened to me this week and I'm so grateful that I was willing to obey and to do what God called me to do. You see, doubt erodes our faith. We need to listen to God for guidance. And the operative word here is listen, not just to hear, but to listen. When I listen, I do what is, what is needed. We need to listen for God's voice when we read the scriptures. Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. God is instructing us to listen to his word so that we gain understanding for our lives. Most of us find it really hard to listen to the voice of God because of all the noise that's going on around and inside of us. That noise comes from worrying, chasing thoughts of doubt and visions of grandeur. The noise of the world chants, calling us to abandon our faith and live only for ourselves. And this floods our minds with thoughts that are totally opposed to God's will and purpose and plan for us. In order to hear his voice, there must be times when I put my life into park or into neutral and just be still before him. But then we say, I don't have time to stop. I have to do, and the list goes on. The truth is sometimes our lives can be slammed into reverse, just like that young person driving his parents' car. And then we go nowhere. We're in reverse. The transmission is grinding under the pressure that we place in our lives. We have to stop and listen. And then we have to move forward when God tells us to. When God told Abraham to go, he went. When God told Abraham to go, not before, not when he knew, not when he felt like it, he went. He did not hesitate. He didn't wait for God to tell him a second time. He didn't wait until he knew all the details by faith. Abraham went. And so often we're in reverse 
and we fail to step out in faith when God tells us to do so. This does not mean rushing blindly into a situation, but it does mean that I'm sensitive to the open door that God places before me. And lastly, I need to be committed to waiting for God's timing. When we say yes to God, we need to say yes to waiting for His timing too. God may ask you for a season of time before He reveals His plans for your life. During times of godly waiting, you're not stuck in reverse. In fact, from God's perspective, you are moving forward because you're willing to wait in faith. Most of God's great saints have gone through this period of waiting and Paul is just one of the people that I think of immediately. Often God will give us just enough light for that step we take today. That is why in Psalm 119, 105 we read, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and the lamp gives just enough light for the next step. Use the time while you wait to study the word and to grow in your relationship with the Lord. God is preparing you for a season when you have to be strong and ready, well versed in his word. You see, my friend, God loves you and wants only the best for you. But we need to be willing to get out of reverse. We need to push in the clutch and shift gears. Please don't be afraid of making a mistake. Because there's nothing you have done to make God love you less. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you more. He wants you to know that He is faithful and just. And He just wants you to take that turn. Put your car in that gear for Him today. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that we can come before you today, Lord, and and just as Abraham was willing to go, willing to go when you spoke to him first time, that Lord, we would be willing to go when you speak to us. God, help us to, to take our lives out of reverse and move forward with you. Move to that place where we wait, Lord, diligently for your call and for your instruction to move. When we obey hearing your word and Lord, when we listen for your call. Oh God, help each and every one of us to move to that place where you've got so much more lined up for us. God, thank you that you love us so much that you can't take your eyes off us. Thank you that you've engraved our names on the palm of your hand. And all you want us to do is to move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. And so friends, thank you very much for, for joining me today in the second of the series that we're doing by Charles Stanley. Indeed, it is such a powerful series for us to go through. And so from my home to yours, I pray every blessing on you. That the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name. Amen.